insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights in the Teens. This is episode 114, Forgiveness. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my caring and understanding co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing okay. So things are slowing down for you. You've finished school for the uh, year. You're on your summer break. Just started this week, right? Yep. So big plans for the summer? Maybe not, not so I don't <laughs> real I don't really know. So you've got some projects that you're working on, mm -hmm. which some of which we've talked about on the podcast. Yep. Um, cuz last year, remember last year we kind of did a podcast on what you were doing for the summer. Yeah. Um, we're picking up with uh, what was the online Varsity Tutors. Varsity Tutors. So you signed up for a couple of classes there as well. Uh, and that's probably a, a subject that we should do a podcast on and kind of highlight what they do and talk about what they do and, and the benefit that you get from that. So maybe we'll do a topic on that. Okay. We've got uh, vacation, some day trips planned for later in the summer. You've got a couple of movie projects you're working on. You've got the work for the podcast. So chances are you'll be... You'll be Pretty busy for the good a good portion of summer with that and your summer work and, and reading and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. No worries though, right? That's okay. You can lie to me here. <laughs> yes, no worries. There we go. That's what we like to hear. So today we're talking forgiveness. So this week we'll understand what forgiveness truly is, the three major forms of forgiveness, and why forgiveness is so important for our adolescents and teens. Then we'll take a look at some of the challenges that teens face when it comes to forgiveness before we finish up by looking at the health benefits of forgiveness and how you can help your teen be a more forgiving person. Before we do that, though, I would um, ask folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get the audio version of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of this and all of our network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights Into Things. And we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, any place you can get a podcast these days. We would also invite folks to uh, reach out to us, give us your feedback, give us some suggestions on topics for the show that we can address. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter, we are at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can reach us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can go to our website and get links to all that and more at www.insightsintothings.com. Ready to get into it? Why not? Well, I could come up with a um, few reasons if you really want me to. <laughs> no. No. Just, just go. Just go. Okay, just. I'm going. So, forgiveness. Um, today's research uh, was gotten or obtained from uh, scholarsandstorytellers.com. Forgiveness, they say, is a tricky thing. It's something that emotions and the ego could get in the way of. It's something we need to do to move forward in certain situations. It's something that often involves our relationship with others. And sometimes it's even something that only we can give to ourselves. And I think self-forgiveness is, is one of the toughest things a lot of people face. Mm -hmm. 
Forgiveness comes in three forms. You can have forgiveness of others when one forgives someone else for something. Uh, you can get forgiveness from others when one is forgiven by someone else for something. Or you can have forgiveness of yourself when one forgives themselves of something they've done. A disappointment, not reaching a goal, saying something or doing something that you would wish you hadn't done and so forth. So forgiveness also needs to be genuine. Simply saying the words I'm sorry doesn't mean that someone actually is sorry. A lot of parents get into the habit when their kids are young, if they do something wrong, they say, well, go say you're sorry. And the kid goes over and says, oh, I'm sorry, and walks away when they're really not sorry. So it doesn't really solve anything. It, it probably sets a bad precedent. Mm -hmm. Saying these words is something that's often encouraged in childhood and continues to be put to practice in adulthood because it's a polite thing to do to say you're sorry. In order to teach young people how to really apologize, they need to be guided to understand what wrongdoing is and how they should have approached the situation differently to do it right the next time. Additionally, they need to be taught how to express their emotions. And I think uh, adolescents and teens, that's one of the biggest struggles there is you feel things that you don't really know what they are. You don't have labels or words or ways to describe them. And you need to learn that. It's an important part of growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, these are things that should start in childhood and continue throughout adolescence. But if you don't have the proper guidance, you tend to be missing some of these skills. Yeah. So why? tell us why forgiveness is important. Well, forgiveness is important, one, um, in order to, you know, at least... Oh. <laughs> I thought you were asking me that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, but I kind of wrote, you know, we have the notes there for it. So let's just cut that out <laughs> and post. <laughs> Forget that ever happened. So kids can be cruel. A 2012 study talks about how an adolescent's adjustment is related to just how they cope with negative experiences among others in their age group. They t they took a look at just what kind of potential forgiveness has has as a way to cope with these kinds of negative experiences. So before we get into that for for you know real as we go through the notes here, you had obviously some ideas of why forgiveness is important. Let's hear your thoughts on why you think forgiveness is important before we get into the the technical study information. Well, I definitely think that forgiveness is important because you don't want to be holding, you don't want to like have, be on bad terms with people because that can lead, I'm pretty sure that's led to pretty bad events. And while it might not be extreme, it's still good to at least be on good terms with someone. Um, and at least... Um, in a way, just agree to disagree, at least. And well, That's a very good point. And let me ask you, have you ever had an instance where you may have had a disagreement or an argument with a family member or a friend, and in retrospect, you had an opportunity to go back and look at what you said or did and realize what you did was wrong, but didn't forgive that person right away? Did that ever happen to you? Uh, there was one time where I'd gotten into somewhat of a fight with Lindsay. Um, now, we had gotten into fights um, kind of a lot, uh, mainly, I guess, be mainly because I wasn't emotionally, I didn't know how to control my emotions at that point. Right, that was a tough time for you, as you know, yeah. growing up. And I was normally the one who started the fights anyway. Um, and usually we'd make up by the end of the day. But there was this one point where it had took an entire week until we eventually made up again. Um, and during that week, how did it make you feel not, not making up? It was definitely one of the hardest weeks um, I had to go through. Because Lindsay was one of the only friends I actually had. And... 
who was like one of the only kids who stayed around because I had to stay in aftercare for a pretty long time. And she was one of the only kids who went to aftercare and stayed there for a decent amount of time. So I really didn't have any friends um, until until I ended up making up with her. But emotionally, how did you feel carrying that baggage for a week? It felt really bad. I felt like I knew this wasn't another one of our regular fights where I'd apologize. And honestly, I was just an emotional package that week. Um, I hated the fact that I, that I didn't apologize. I didn't know what was the right way to fix it. And I felt like we weren't going to be friends anymore. Yeah, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But that's exactly what they're talking about here is why it's important. Because it carrying that emotional baggage, knowing that maybe you did something wrong or you hurt a friend's feelings takes a toll on you emotionally. And it can be emotionally exhausting for you to, to carry that around without getting clearing your, your conscience, so mm-hmm. to speak. Tell us what they talk about um, as far as the study goes. So it turns out that adolescents who are more forgiving were more likely to engage in more eff- um, effective forms of coping and less likely to seek revenge when bullied. Forgiveness might be a valuable coping strategy for both victims and bully victims because youth who respond to bullying are in more negative ways perpetuate victimization and other relationship problems with their peers and and the act of forgiving may also help the development of the ability to identify remorse and express empathy. Right. So what they're really saying here is that kids that don't forgive, whether it's from bullying or something else, perpetuate that cycle of violence or abuse or bullying, and it continues further down the line. The kids that can forgive and and kind of patch up those relationship problems are more empathetic. You know what empathy is? Mm-hmm. Right, so, so empathy for, for the audience, empathy is the ability to feel the emotions or sense the emotions of others. So if I say something to hurt your feelings and I see that your feelings are hurt and I'm empathetic, it then bothers me because I feel sort of what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And kids that can forgive tend to be more empathetic. And later on in life, that empathy is what makes us, you know, kind, forgiving, accepting humans. So if you don't forgive, then it's a, it's a compounding cycle where it just gets progressively worse from there, which is another reason why it's very important to forgive. Um, what was the, there was another point that they bring up as well. What was that? Um, So further research confirmed that forgiving is good for you because it can reduce the burden on mental health. By being forgiving of others, of ourselves and others, the connection between stress and mental illness can be eliminated. In other words, forgiveness can help young people to both overcome and let go of negative experiences among peers, and it can be a positive effect on their social development and mental health. Exactly. So... You know, we all get into situations where we do something wrong or someone does something wrong to us, and that's like an emotional trauma to the, to the human psyche. And the act of forgiving is is really the first part of the healing process of the human psyche. Uh, if you if you cut yourself and you never bother to clean it and bandage it, it's not going to heal properly. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't heal properly, you get you know recurring wounds, you'll get scarring, and you carry that wound for your whole life. And when you think of conflict with other people, you get into an argument with someone, and a lot of times the emotions run high, and you say things that you don't mean, but they are things that come out in the heat of the moment because of how high your emotions are. Mm -hmm. And you go back afterwards, and you know you didn't mean those things. But if you don't start the healing process 
by forgiving the person who said those things or for apologizing for those things, if you don't start that healing process, then that rift starts. That scar starts to scab over and that problem never goes away. And then the next time you're in that situation, if you're the person who hurt someone, it makes it much easier for you to hurt that person because you're less empathetic at, at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's something that really you, you kind of need to treat right off the bat and not wait if you can avoid waiting. Mm -hmm. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the challenges that teens face when it comes to forgiveness. Okay. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we are talking forgiveness. So there are certain challenges that teens face when it comes to forgiveness. And as really it has nothing to do with uh, why you need to forgive someone. According to experts, teens' immediate responses to being wronged by someone are motivated by hormones. And there are a lot of hormones at play in this age group. Uh, they also say that part of the brain that helps someone to have self-control and the ability to control their immediate responses doesn't fully mature until you're about 26 years old. Wow. So people under that age tend to be very impulsive. Mm. Uh, and I could attest to that because when I was your age, I had a lot of issues where I would get in the fights a lot. Um, I was the type of person, I never liked bullies. And I was one of the biggest kids in school, my entire school career. So every time I saw a bully picking on someone, whether it was my friend or someone else, I was the type of person who intervened. I couldn't control that urge to not just turn the other cheek. And as a result, I wound up getting into a lot of fights that way. So they go on to say that that means the urge for payback is strong. It can be hard to overcome, but patience and putting oneself in the other person's shoes in order to let go of hard feelings will pay off in the end. And this is where some of the struggles with teens are, where teens tend to see what's happening in the moment right now. And, and that's not a dig on teens. That's just the way your brains are wired. And it it's a survival instinct. Um, most most teens tend to not look at the pic bigger picture, the lo long term picture, um, and and that's just from evolution. Um, so what else? Uh, how else is is forgiveness different with teens and adolescents? So think about the last time you were faced with having to forgive or ask for forgiveness. It probably had to do with a social situation involving one other person or a group of other people. A 2018 study discusses that, by its very nature, forgiveness is an interpersonal process, and to fully understand the forgiveness process, the perspectives of both the victim, who may, who may grant forgiveness, and the perpetrator, who may seek forgiveness, is needed. Adolescents Adolescence is a critical time for social situations and, re and research shows that there are differences in how different age, aged young people both understand wrongdoings and approach forgiveness. 
There's a sort of spectrum that kids move through as they develop an understanding of the consequences of their actions and the nature of forgiveness. For example, two opposite ends of the spectrum are that young children negotiate with forgiveness, claiming that they'll forgive in, in exchange for something they wanted or need. College-aged youth view it more as it means to maintain social relationships. Now, that's an interesting uh, contrast that they show there where forgiveness itself in, in this younger group is more of a tool, and that tool is used differently. You know, you can use one side of a hammer to put a nail in or use the other side to pull a nail out. And depending on your age, people are using forgiveness for different purposes. Now, let's think back to a situation where someone has wronged you and um, you forgave them. Can you think of any specific examples of that? Um, I guess maybe this one time, um, I remember this one girl who I was, who I was playing with, um, I don't know what she was doing, um, basically, like, she wanted me to look away, like, I had toys out, and basically, she wanted me to look, look away from them, where she was planning on taking them, but I ended up seeing it out of the corner of my eye, um, and we ended up having to tell the teacher about it, and I ended up forgiving her for doing so. And how did she react to you forgiving her? Um, I'd say she, um, react, she thanked me for it, um. Now, did she actually acknowledge that she had done something wrong to you? Um, actually, I think it was only when the teacher got involved, because... When I first said that she was trying to take my, well, I think she did take my toys, um, but I had seen it out of the corner of my eye, and I, like, sort of, I sort of, like, called her out for it, and she denied it, and until I got the teacher involved, she didn't really admit it. So it wasn't until there was a consequence attached to it that she felt compelled to apologize. Yeah. And despite that compelling her to apologize, you still forgave her. Yeah. Well, and I think that's a testament to your character there that, you know, you're still willing to forgive her. Now, did you continue to play with her after that? Um, I think we kind of went our separate ways afterwards because I really don't entirely remember what, what exactly we were doing. I don't think I was playing with her specifically. I think she just came up and was trying to do it as a joke or something. I see. I really I don't see. know. So the, I guess the point is, is, especially in situations where you have – different age groups involved, the social rules, I guess, or the motivating factors of forgiveness become intertwined. They become complicated, much more complicated than just right or wrong because certain people are trying to get different things out of the act of uh, forgiving people or apologizing. So there's certain motivators there. It's important to consider just how much of an understanding of forgiveness youth have at their age and stage of life. Another consideration is that given the media and the technology-based culture that we live in, cyberbullying is a looming threat to young people as well. Research shows the promotion of forgiveness can help to prevent cyberbullying. Uh, there was something in the news just recently with a, a celebrity who was kind of called on the carpet for cyberbullying a couple of years ago. Um, today, she had been called on the carpet and finally came forward and apologized for it. And is you know, trying to make amends for it now. So even if that apology and that forgiveness is delayed, it can still have a positive impact. Mm -hmm. um, they say this is a huge opportunity for those in content development and creation. So kind of a message to to people like us, you know, people who generate content and put it out on the internet to, to send the right message to kids and to teens. Mm -hmm. uh, the very virtual landscape in which cyberbullying happens could potentially prevent it, um, could potentially prevent it through stressing its importance and educating on how to achieve it, ultimately helping youth to overcome wrongdoings by letting go and practicing forgiveness. And you can, you can kind of make that 
they they describe it as exciting here. I would rather refer to it as as rewarding. Like um, you think back to the time when when you and your friend had got into an argument, and you went a week without forgiving her. How did you feel? After you forgave her, did you? How did you feel about yourself? Not necessarily the incident, but how did you feel about yourself after you forgave her? I felt a lot better. I was a lot. I definitely. It was definitely a turning point. Um, I felt very happy that I that we ended up making amends and that I ended up forgiving her. Yeah, and and I think the important thing, the the real significant takeaway, is. When you can put yourself in someone else's shoes, look at it from their perspective, kind of try to figure out why they said something or why they did something the way they did. And you'll see a lot of times, you know, someone may say something mean to you or rude to you. And it has nothing to do with you. They could have had a bad day. They could have gotten yelled at. They could have gotten in trouble. They could have had a bad night's sleep. It could be any number of things. And we all go through those things ourselves. You know, there are nights that you don't sleep well. There are nights that maybe you didn't do well on a test. Or you may be stressing about taking a test and that influences how you deal with people. So being able to empathize and understand the other person's point of view goes a long way in helping to achieve forgiveness. And once you can forgive, it's emotionally liberating for you. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of cleansing, you know, it's, you feel better about yourself that you're not carrying that negative feeling around with you anymore. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, anytime you carry negative feelings, it, it can weigh you down, you know? Definitely. So, uh, we're going to take our second break and then we're going to come back and talk about the actual health benefits of forgiveness. All right. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we are talking about forgiveness. And right now we're going to be talking about the health benefits of forgiveness. Researchers have identified that forgiveness is associated with several benefits, including better physical and mental health. Examples are low blood pressure and psychological well-being, reduced anger, and maintenance with of close relationships. On the other hand, holding grudges and seeking revenge is associated with several health concerns including depression, anxiety, poor physical health, and lower self-esteem. The benefits of forgiveness are not only have not only been found in adults, but also in children and adolescents as well. The ability to forgive someone is an essential component to maintaining relationships with others and is especially important during development. Peer relationships are crucial for children's social, emotional, physical, and psychological well-being. But as we all know from experience, relationships are not always easy to manage, especially in the face of conflict. So there are actually real documented benefits to your health to forgiveness. Um, You know, we talk kind of talked about the emotional baggage side of things and how exhausting that can be. But, you know, it affects your blood pressure. It it could affect your heart rate. It could affect your sleep cycle. Um, It could affect you from a a self-esteem standpoint where, 
if you fail to forgive someone, you may look at yourself differently after that. And a lot of times this sort of happens in situations where you may have an argument with someone who might be moving away and you don't patch that up before they move away and then you don't have an opportunity or God forbid you have an argument with someone and they pass away and you never have an opportunity to make that up to them before they do. Uh, There was a documentary I was watching the other night uh, about this famous celebrity and the celebrity's friend had to take them to the airport. Uh, They were traveling. They had traveled overseas because they had a death in the family and the celebrity's health wasn't very well. You know, everyone kind of knew that he wasn't doing so well. But the the friend who drove him to the airport, they had an argument. And the celebrity had invited them to to walk with them in the airport so they could talk it over. And they were they weren't ready to to talk it over because they were still angry. So they declined that. And the celebrity flew overseas for the funeral for the family member, and they passed away while they were over there. And this friend of the celebrities had to carry that with them. And, and it was an emotional baggage that took a toll on their emotional and their physical health. Um, so it's important that you not let these things fester because an emotional wound is, is no different than a physical wound. If you don't take care of it, it's going to fester. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are... Uh, health consequences that we have to deal with with those. You know, a lot of people, I myself, I already have high blood pressure, you know, just because of my, my, my physical status. The last thing I need is to carry the emotional baggage and aggravate something like that. And, and when you get into a situation with forgiveness and apologizing, a lot of times people's pride and ego went out over that and they don't realize the effect that it has on their health. Uh, just like laughter, you know, they say laughter is the best medicine and there's clinical studies that suggest that, you know, if you are happy, go lucky and, and you laugh a lot and you joke a lot, you physically are better. Uh, so it, people don't t- really appreciate the physical impact that, that the brain, the mental, emotional side of things has on things. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how we can teach our children about the virtues of forgiveness. So one very important way is through parenting, um, which, you know, Molly and I try to do, which is really what motivated this podcast, too. Yeah. Uh, As research, research has consistently shown, children often imitate their parents' behaviors, making parents a direct model of behavior for their children. One study in particular demonstrated how parents' forgiving tendencies were associated with their child's forgiving tendencies, and the results were maintained up to one year later. So that's a pretty significant impact over little things like that. Yeah. Outside of modeling forgiving behavior, parents can also explicitly teach their children about forgiveness and how they should respond when faced with conflict or when someone has hurt them. So this is this is sort of the philosophy that mommy and daddy have had, and it's it's sort of always been to set the example of how we would like you to be. Do you find that to be helpful in guiding your actions? I mean, yeah, I've definitely always been a very forgiving person. Um, it was definitely a bit of a struggle when I started going through the emotional problems, but eventually when I got that figured out, it was a lot easier to end up forgiving people. Um, and I definitely think a lot of that had to do with you guys being the influence on me. And how do you think your forgiving tendencies, or do you think your forg- forgiving tendencies have had an influence over your friends that you've shared those tendencies with? Um, I think that, um, they also have received the positive feedback because, um, I'm normally the one who, who, whenever we get into fights, I'm normally the one who ends up apologizing because 
I normally was the one who started the fights. Um, and um, my one friend Lindsay, after the one week where we didn't, um, where we didn't talk with each other after the fight, she felt incredibly. Re- she told me she felt incredibly relieved that we were back to being um, really good friends and that we could, you know, hang out again. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see how therapeutic that is. Let me ask you: Do you think that mommy and daddy? F- fight a lot no not to the point where it's where i think i where i'm where i get afraid to the point where you might divorce um you do definitely have arguments i notice them and hear them but it's always in somewhat of a playful way and even if you guys are upset normally you guys make up make it up afterwards so do you think we set a decent example for you when it comes to relationship management like that? Probably, yeah. Okay. That's good. There's one instance that I, you know, I, I don't know if I've shared with you. I know I've shared with mommy. Um, my one brother and I had gotten into an argument uh, quite some time ago. This is a very long time ago. He was supposed to be in my wedding. And uh, he had a f- his wife had a friend of his who was getting married. So our mom happened to be at some, I don't know if it was a baby shower or something like that for his wife. And she said something or did something that made his wife angry. And as a result, he pulled out of my wedding and we had already gotten the tuxedos. We had already, you know, everything was booked and everything was set. So it was going to cost quite a bit of money. And, um, He pulled out under the premise that he had to go to his wife's friend's wedding that was happening at the same day. And that, you know, it hurt and and I was kind of offended by it, but it was one of those things where I kind of got over it and, you know, was willing to forgive him. So it turns out later on, uh, apparently I had done something or said something to my other brother. I have three brothers had three brothers. I had said something to my other brother that offended the brother who pulled out of my wedding. So all the while I thought he and I weren't talking because of what he did to me. And he was mad at me because of something that I didn't even realize that I did to my other brother. So I had pulled him aside one day when he was over my mom's house for a, a birthday party or something. And I pulled him outside and I said, look, you know, we, we've not talked long enough. I, I said, you know, let's just, let's put bygones to the side here and, and let's get over this. I'm not angry at what you did at my wedding anymore. And he looked at me as if I had like three eyes or something like that. Like I had no clue why we were arguing because he was angry at me for a completely different reason, and he flat out refused to even listen to any explanation that I had. So when he left, it was it was like an episode of The Twilight Zone. When he left, I felt relieved that I had forgiven him, and I had told him that I had forgiven him. I felt very confused that he was angry at me. And to this day, we still don't talk to each other because of something that he says that I did that I'm pretty sure I never did. But looking back now, I can look at it with a clear conscience, knowing that even though he did do something that offended me and my wife at the time, I I was, you know, mature enough that I forgave him for that, even though he obviously didn't want that forgiveness. And I felt better after that, even though we still haven't talked. So it was a very strange tale of forgiveness that I went through with that. Um, But that's probably the biggest experience that I have with that, where I really felt terrible that he and I had gone almost four years without ever talking after that whole incident happened. And I felt terrible not patching things up, even though I wasn't the one that did anything wrong. I just felt wrong that, that we were on the odds as a result. And, and I tried to, to fix that and, and felt relieved afterwards. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times forgiveness isn't something that fixes a broken relationship, 
But if it's the right thing to do, you should still do it, even though you might not get the end result that you're looking for, I guess, is the moral of the story there. Okay. Um, so what else is there that, that we can help parents understand? So despite parents' best efforts to install appropriate values in their children, there are often, they are often in competition with the media. In today's society, media is a very powerful tool that can be that can manipulate the beliefs, norms, perceptions, values, and behaviors of the society at large. If something is accepted by the media, it is often accepted by society as well. But if used on a pro, but if but if used appropriately, media can be an important educational tool. Therefore, what children see in the media. What children see in the media they consume, like YouTube, television, and apps, will have an enormous impact on their development, and sometimes even more than more so than parents. In this sense, how characters and stories are represented in the media matters a lot. Oftentimes, representation of characters is talked about in terms of gender or race. However, what we must not forget is that the representation is that representation can also be about a character's internal qualities, morals, and beliefs. Embodying forgiveness is no exception. Because of the many benefits that that accompany the act of forgiving and being forgiven, it is critical that we create characters in the media who display the vi- virtue of forgiveness and can therefore teach children and adolescents how to exercise this in their own lives. So I guess really what they're getting at here is this, is what we consume in the media today has an influence over youth, and, and media always has. I mean, going back to the early days of radio, you, know, you had parents that didn't want their kids listening to rock and roll because of the influence it had over them, right? Mm-hmm. So influence of media on kids is not something new. I think today, though, because of the overexposure of media and the fact that it's so in your face and there's so many different sources for it now, you know, anybody, you know, can make a podcast, you know, anybody can make YouTube videos or TikTok or whatever. And these mediums aren't really regulated. Like, you know, up until the 1990s, all through my youth, Your media was movies, television, and radio. Well, all three of those had some kind of governing body that dictated what they could show or say or do. So your depictions had a lot more control over them. Wouldn't you agree? Yep, definitely. And nowadays, anybody can produce just about anything they want and put it out there for kids to consume. So it's very difficult for parents to regulate what their kids are exposed to and it's very easy for kids to be influenced by those things so you kind of have to be careful what they're consuming yeah um i do want to point out something um that i've noticed uh various forms of the media haven't entirely i don't feel put the right message out for kids about the subject of forgiving um of course, it's like I kn- there is the whole "sorry do- doesn't always work" thing, which um, is a good message. But I've also seen things where, like, it's good for a character to get revenge on somebody. Where I've learned that that's really not a good message to be putting out to kids, and it's still kind of a popular message that I feel kind of needs to die down and we need to, you know, talk about forgiveness in a different light. Um, I just feel like revenge is just something that kids shouldn't really do because, well, it's really not going to help anything. Absolutely. The, The whole concept of getting even never gets anybody even. Yeah. You know, somebody always suffers when it comes to that kind of mentality. And a lot of times it's the person who was wronged in the first place who thinks they need to get even and they do something in retaliation. And the result of that is hurting themselves again. You know, it may be morally hurting you. It may be ethically hurting you. You may be doing something that gets you in trouble. So... 
again, that, that kind of speaks to that impulse control that kids don't have until you develop in that, you know, physically in your brain in your mid twenties. So it's difficult to get kids to have that, that long game approach where you're looking further ahead and understanding what your consequences are. Um, but a lot of times it's a matter of role playing, right? So we role play, we play D and D and we take our characters and we take them in different directions. But when we make choices as those characters, there's consequences Mm -hmm. and we have to deal with them. You know, if you get into a fight and you can't win that fight, it might cost your character something. Yeah. You can role play in real life too. If someone wrongs you and you decide you, your first impulse is to get back at them and get even to take a minute to kind of play out that scenario in your head, do a little bit of a thought experiment and think, okay, so, uh, Johnny bumped me in the hallway and maybe knocked my books over. So I'm going to trip him in the hallway next time. Okay. Well, if I do that and I escalate that, that violence, well, maybe his friends are going to beat me up at that point, or maybe the, the teachers are going to see me and get, I'm going to get in trouble. Like what good can possibly come of that other than maybe a little bit of satisfaction that you're getting back at them. Yeah. And look at it long game. Like, okay, so I got that satisfaction. Now what? Well, now I'm as bad as he is. Yeah. So take a moment to kind of play through those scenarios and see what you're getting where wouldn't it be easier to just walk away or, or go over to him and say, you know, What's wrong? Did I do something? Did I offend you? Did I make you upset? What is it that that made you do that to me? Because a lot of times what you'll find is that bullies, especially in a situation like that where it's a bully, they're looking for confrontation because they're compensating for something else. Mm -hmm. And when you call them out on that, the vulnerability that they feel kind of exposes them in a very uncomfortable way. And they won't do it anymore after that. Like a lot of times people tell you, well, if a bully hits you, hit him back. Well, no, then he's just going to hit you back harder. Yeah. But if you ask the bully, why did you hit me? Did you have a bad day? Did your parents yell at you? You know, did you, did your dog like bite you or something? If you can expose them and, and the fragility of their psyche that causes them to do that, to try to get back at someone else or something else, you'll find that it tends to break down that outward appearance that they have. And they won't bother you anymore because they don't want to have that vulnerability of theirs exposed. Yeah. And that's the one thing that happened with like a fight I'm assuming happened at my one school. There was this one kid who I think tripped one of the other kids. And instead of the one kid being like, why'd you do that? They basically fought back, and it broke out into a large fight that the whole school had pretty much kind of had to take consequences for. Yeah, and I had I had a kid like that. We were in gym class, you know, my junior or senior year in high school, and the kid just hauled off and hit me for some reason. And he was expecting me to sort of jump in and, and go after him. And I walked up to him like... Like, confused. Like, why would you do that? What What's wrong with you? Like, and I did it in a way that expressed my concern for him. Like, is there something wrong? Is something bothering you? Did somebody do something to you? And he was so taken aback by that that he just walked away at that point. Because everyone was watching us at this point because they were expecting a fight to break out. And he came to me later after lunch that day. And he's like, and he apologized and he's like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I had just like, it was something with his mom or his his stepdad. I think it was like his stepdad did something or yelled at him or something that morning. And he was just riled up from that. But he was so shocked that somebody would care about him and want to know what happened to him. And he and I became really good friends after that. And, and he was always kind of that loose cannon bully type and he was a completely changed person after that um so it's you'd be surprised what you can do if you take a moment to think through your actions before you take those actions and sometimes you might still take those actions and deal with those consequences 
but sometimes thinking through might find you might find different options and you might find better options and i think that's the important lesson so i think that was all we had today okay was there anything else that you wanted to add to the topic uh i think that was really it i just wanted to talk about the whole aspect of revenge and such and how it's really not the best way and how forgiveness i kind of wanted to do more or less a compare and contrast kind of thing okay i think that was a good point we'll take a quick break we'll come back we'll get your closing thoughts and finish up the business of the podcast all righty go for your closing thoughts so to everyone out there, um, I just want to say that forgiveness is something that should be taught and is something that everyone should do. Um, I want to uh, talk again. Revenge is definitely not an option. It's just going to lead to even more consequences that you really don't want to deal with. And you'd be surprised how forgiveness can really be helpful. So to parents, make sure you... T- you teach your teens the right values and how to forgive um, and just never try taking revenge against someone and at least try to patch up things. Okay. Wise words as always. Thank you. Before we do go, I want to remind folks you can subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all our shows are available, listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc., etc. But also ask folks, give us your feedback. Do you have any experiences similar to what we talk about on the show? Let us know. Are there things that we should be talking about that we're not talking about? Shoot us an email. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can also get high-res versions of all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Or you can catch our stream. We do stream five days a week on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, On Twitch, we're at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free Twitch Prime monthly subscription. We'd appreciate you throwing that our way. Audio versions of this uh, can be found on the web if you don't have a podcast uh, catcher. Uh, you can listen to it on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can reach us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can get us on Instagram, which we occasionally post to. We need to get a little bit better at that, but occasionally we'll post on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, where you can get links to all those videos. We have a a whole new uh, page up now for our uh, hosts uh, that was recently updated this weekend. Let me me pull that up real quick. We have some new uh, character photos from from an app that we, we discovered that gave us sort of cartoony photo shots. So all of our hosts are up on there now. If you're an audio-only listener, you can get an idea of what your hosts look like. Um, You can get that at our website at insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Nicely done. And I think that's it for today. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.